Welcome back guys to Tech Yes City and we are in the middle right here of Akihabara, Tokyo, Japan. We just docked in a few days ago and I have been absolutely itching to go on a used PC parts hunt to check out not only how good the deals are, but also since the yen, the Japanese yen is so cheap right now versus the US dollar and also the Australian dollar, we're hoping that we can get not just really good deals, but some of the best deals I have seen in my lifetime since the yen is the cheapest I've seen in my lifetime too. Now, also we are recording on the street here in the middle of Tokyo. I'm using like this AliExpress microphone. Hopefully it does the job really well. It did say in the description that it's a dynamic microphone, meaning that it's blocking out a lot of the train noises and the car noises. But I guess this video will be the ultimate test for this budget microphone right here. However, that aside, let's go into the first store right now, which we are really close to. It's called Junk Paradise, and we'll see what deals they have inside. I'm actually <laughs> really excited. I'll take that. So coming out of the first junk paradise and you're like, Brian, the first junk paradise? That's right, there's I believe five junk paradises in this place, this district alone where I am here. So there's lots more to shop for. But coming out of this one, we managed to score an RTX 4060 for a little over 200 US dollars. So that, in my opinion, that's an absolute bargain. Whack that into a gaming PC, great flip there. But also they had a GTX 1060 six gigabyte going for a little over 50 US dollars too. So I snagged that up on the shelves as well. There was also really decent prices on all the other GPUs. It's just that I'm sifting through these uh, shelves and I'm looking for the absolute cream of the crop because what you're seeing on the shelves right now too, if you're on a tourist passport, which we've got a 90 day passport coming from Australia. If you're on a tourist passport, you can pretty much get from a lot of these stores tax free. That will just take the tax off. And so that means you can get your PC parts even cheaper. I mean, in some countries or around the world, it may be even just cheaper to fly into Japan on a one day basis, buy all your PC parts and then just fly home. I mean, with the Japanese yen being so cheap, that might just be a thing. But the last deal that we got in here was some DDR4 memory, actually two different eight gigabyte sticks, because I do want to put together a budget DDR4 system in the near future. And coming in at like, I think it was $8 a stick and also $6 something a stick of DDR4 memory to make up 16 gigabytes in total. But let's continue this journey right now and see what other deals we can snag up right after today's video sponsor. If you wanna get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro too. Links in description below. Just over there is a store called Skumo, and this one specializes in used PC parts. Now, this would be my favorite store in Tokyo. Other stores include DOS Para and things like that, which you've probably seen in previous Japan PC parts hunts. But this store in particular always has a deal whenever I go inside. And today was no different in that we got a GTX 1070 for a little over 60 US dollars. And then also on the shelves, they had a GTX 1080, which I managed to snag up for just under $90. Now they also had a lot of other graphics cards that I was so close to getting. Some of those being RTX 3080s. I think they were going for around uh, 350 US a pop. And there's also an RTX 3070, which is going for around 230 US dollars. Now with the RTX 3070, I am going to look around and if I cannot find a cheaper price elsewhere, I may just get that 3070 in there for that said price. 
Because another good thing about not only Skumo but also DOS Para is that they give out uh, seven day warranties at least on all their parts that aren't labeled as junk. I was almost ready to get a 3700X, a Ryzen 7, because it includes the raised prism. But then I looked on AliExpress and the prices of CPUs on AliExpress, pretty much compared to all the CPUs in there, were cheaper and that's delivered to my door. So I'm all about price performance, getting the best price possible. So a lot of those CPUs, at least for me, they're gonna continue to sit on the shelves. I should have known better. Bust off. So consecutively checking out two junk paradises in a row ended up being one of them didn't really have any PC parts at all, so it was a bust. But then the other one had actually quite a lot of GPUs, used GPUs for sale. They also had CPUs, but just like all the previous used stores we've checked out, AliExpress unfortunately is offering better used prices on their CPUs delivered to your door than these places are even minus the tax and with the end being so cheap. But the GPUs is where it is definitely at, where we ended up scoring another GTX 1070, as well as another GTX 1080. So this just must be the play this month in Japan, 1070s, 1080s that are going for just ridiculously cheap prices. But then also they had 3070s for the exact same price. The lowest price I could see was the exact same price as the Skumo that we first went into. So. I'm hoping that we can find a 3070 for a cheaper price, <laughs> but it seems like that is the floor for a 3070. But in terms of 3060s, they were a little bit higher than what I've previously picked them up for in the past, as well as your RTX 3080s and surprisingly even 4080s are coming up for really decent prices here on the used market, but they're still not at that right price for me to go smash Taro on. But there is an RX uh, 5700, which I am just gonna sit down right now and do a little bit of homework on because I believe it was coming in just a little bit over a hundred US dollars. And for 5,700 at this price, I don't usually buy AMD cards, but when they get cheap enough, I guess when anything gets cheap enough, it's gonna get in the Tech Yes backpack. Now, you may be thinking, why aren't you buying the AMD cards up? And the thing is, it's just when I go to put them in used PC uh, flips, especially in Australia, they just don't sell anywhere near as well. Just like the RTX 2000 series that we explained before, they just don't sell anywhere near as well as the RTX 3000 or even 1000 series on lower price points. And so that's the predicament I'm in. I don't really make the rules, I just play the game. But speaking of playing the game, let's go head over to the next two junk paradises, which are just across the road and see what they unravel. So now we've come out of another two junk paradises and this was a similar story as before. One of the junk paradises only had like smartphones and laptops, so it didn't really have any PC parts. But then the next one that we went into, they've actually changed the store around so much since the last time we've been in there. And 
all the parts are now downstairs when they used to be upstairs. And going downstairs, I immediately looked through all these parts and I was thinking at first, okay, there's nothing special here. But then it's basically when I look at GPU prices, there's two things that I do. The first is I always look at what's on the new market before I start a parts on. Okay, what's the price of an RX 6600, for instance, a gigabyte? Well, it's 200 USD. That's your baseline for value going forward. Same with an RTX 3060, what's that? And so that's 290 coming into this parts hunt. And so that's your baseline for all your other GPUs in price performance to get compared against. But then after that, what we're looking at is all these models on the shelves and we're kind of playing whack-a-mole with prices. Anything that sticks its head out as being a lot cheaper than the others and also in working condition, we then check it out. And a lot of times in Japan, It'll be the cheapest deals will be the ones with no boxes or they'll be like uh, missing some little thing. And so in this case, there was a GTX 1660 Ti that was going for around, I think it was under 80 US dollars, which <laughs> I just picked that up straight away. They said there was some little noise coming out of one of the fans. And I thought that's absolutely fine. We'll be able to fix that up with our trusty multi-purpose spray. If not, we'll just have to replace a fan with something possibly from an older GPU where we've got heaps of those old GPUs with spare fans lying around. So that'll be hopefully an easy fix. And at that price for a 1660 Ti, it's an absolute no brainer in my opinion, plus the warranty as well. Junk Paradise gives you a seven day warranty. So if something's wrong, just bring it back, get your money back. But then we had a motherboard. I was going through the motherboards and we had an X470 going for under 50 USD. And now when I bought it, he asked me, what CPU are you pairing this with? And I'm seeing, because it's got an early BIOS version on it, it'll only work with Ryzen 1000 and 2000 series. So basically they were just asking me to make sure that I wasn't buying this with a Ryzen 3000 because they couldn't be bothered updating the BIOS. But I mean, that being said, the BIOS update aside, it's a great motherboard for under 50 USD. And also on top of that, it didn't include the top brackets for the backplate as well. So in other words, someone had a, ray, a race spire or something attached to this motherboard, then they just took that cooler off the CPU out and just traded the motherboard into Junk Paradise in its current state with just the backplate. And at least there's the IO shield there though. So can't really complain about that deal, especially at the price. But in saying that, there is still a little bit of time before it starts to get dark here in Tokyo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tour around and see if there's just any other odd stores that have deals available but also we may just pick up the cheapest RTX 3070 because that was a decent price and they do go well in flips as well as that RX 5700. So we just come out of DOS Paradise and inside the store, they ended up having one really good deal. And this was for a B350 motherboard. I was looking around at motherboards and this one was coming in, I think a little over 25 US dollars, which for a motherboard on AM4, especially in the B series, I think that's a really good bargain. Do let us know in the comments if you think it's a decent deal or not. And also in the store, I was so close to getting an RTX 2080 Super. And this was a little under 200 USD, but then I remembered in Australia, I just had a really tough time selling any computer with an RTX 2000 series GPU in it, at least for a comparable price of the GPU versus say an RTX 3000 series card. So for instance, if I got a 3070 for a little over $200 and then I got a 2080 Ti, for even a little bit more money, the 2080 Ti would just take longer to sell and I'd sell the PC for less money than with the PC with the RTX 3070 in it. So I'm kind of still on the fence on whether I should pick up RTX 2000 series cards, but I think at its current price point, I may just give it a miss, but let's continue on.
So we just come out now of this place called Posicon. Uh, there's some kanji after it as well. <laughs> but there's actually two of these stores, which we just checked both of them. And the used parts, unfortunately, and the bigger of these stores, they're owned by the same person. The bigger one uh, had an absolute bust of a time on used PC parts and the deals there. But then we also had the new store. One of them was selling new motherboards, B550 motherboards, for a little over 50 US dollars. So I decided to try one and see if the scores match up to say an X570 or something like that, especially if we're coupling it with say a Ryzen 7 5700X or even the new 5700X 3D, which I do want to test. Because if we can get away with the B550 and there's no problems with the boards with these mid-range Ryzen 7 CPUs on AM4, then I think it makes for a pretty decent deal. So before we ducked out of Tokyo, we quickly got the final three deals on the table here. That is the RX 6700, the RTX 3070, and then this B450 Pro motherboard, which came in at a price of under 50 USD. So decided to snag that up as well. And the reason I didn't record in Tokyo when I got these deals is because I actually was closing in on 6 p.m. and I wanted to quickly rush out of there before prime time uh, train traffic. Otherwise, it just gets absolutely crammed on those trains and it's actually kind of uncomfortable. Uh, that's from about 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So if you can get out of Tokyo before 6 p.m. and you're traveling on the trains, then you might want to do that. But what we're going to do right now is we've got those three deals. We're gonna actually going to start testing all these parts soon because they do come with warranties. These parts are not junk. And these are all the other deals that we got here. So... <laughs> absolutely crazy haul right now i'll put the tally up on the screen for you guys what we've paid in terms of japanese yen compared against the united states dollar but i am shocked i mean i was on foot so i actually couldn't get any more deals after this because i've got to carry all this stuff around to tokyo and then on a train and then back to my house and this is just crazy the cream of the crop i believe we picked up here today if you guys saw any deals on the shelves that you thought were also really good, do let us know in the comments too. But I'm thinking that at this point in time, if I was in Australia, I would definitely be buying more of these parts. It's just the problem is I got to get it on a suitcase and get it back to Australia, the majority of the stuff. But even things like uh, there were some other GTX 1070s there. Uh, there was other 1660s and things like that. And even like 1050 Ti's going for pretty cheap. I would have picked them all up because they all go really well in gaming PCs, depending on the budget. The one thing that's important to talk about too before we start testing here is that these parts are not junk. They do come with, at the very least, a seven day guarantee. So that's why I'm gonna test them out and stress test them right now to identify any problems and maybe some of them need just thermal paste changes in the terms of the graphics cards and things like that. But also if something's faulty, I can return it. But there was another place that I did check out before I left Tokyo, and that was the place with the junk bins. I actually was going here last year, but the junk bins now, they're not worth the money paying for that stuff. Because, for instance, there was like B550 and B450 motherboards there, and I couldn't get the tax 10% discount to at this particular store. And so those parts are just definitely not worth it because they're junk. You just don't get any guarantee. So if they don't work or something's wrong, you just can't get in. There's no recourse. And so if that's the case, I'd be paying half the price that they're asking for those prices because you're just taking a risk. And I was actually doing this in the past when I was picking up, I think like third and fourth gen motherboards and things like that. It ended up working out okay. But still, when we're moving into like B550 territory and we're paying uh, good money for these boards and we pretty much pay the same price for some of these boards with guarantees, I'd much rather go with that option.
We've got some bad news and that is the RX 5700. It locks up after about 20 or 30 seconds of benchmarking. Now, if we drop the core clock speeds down to about uh, 1600, it does last a bit longer. And the weird thing is the temperatures were checking out absolutely fine, all the different temperature spots. So the card unfortunately just has a problem and I was really looking forward to um, putting this in a build and testing it out versus cards at similar price points because you guys have been telling me that uh, the 5700 as well as the 5700 XT, they are go-to cards in terms of which AMD cards you guys like in terms of picking up value. But it's just the irony here is, is that I've been mainly buying Nvidia GPUs on the used market and the one time I buy an AMD card in a little bit, it ends up being the only card that's faulty. So <laughs> now we've got this RTX 3070 here. This works absolutely fine, except it does throttle on the temperature limits quite fast. And what I noticed here was that the card itself remains relatively cool, especially in the back plate. And that's basically just needs to um, have new thermal paste applied and that should be good to go. So. Other than that though, all the other cards that we tested out, they ran absolutely fine. I did, um, they, I think one of the places they were telling me that some, I think it was a 1660 Ti, the reason it was so cheap, it had a fan noise problem. But I think I already fixed that at the store. I just said, look, you know, you just sort of, sometimes you just have to wiggle it and, uh, you know, fumble around with it and <laughs> it comes good. And though in terms of all the other GPUs, they worked absolutely fine. In fact, all the 10 series cards were running, not just great in terms of temperatures, but also the GTX 1060, the palette, that actually looked really good. I've never seen this card in person and just looking at it from different angles, I was like, damn, that's a really good looking GPU. So I was really happy I picked that one up. I think that's gonna go really well in a flip when it comes to saleability, just because it's got the RGB, but also the silver and black theme is just, I think it's absolutely banging on this particular GPU. Now, also I got told uh, with the 1660 Ti in particular, as well as some of the blower cards that they were, there was some fan noises, but with the blower cards, I tested them all out. It was just literally just uh, reference blower uh, fans. So all you have to do to get around that is if, especially on a 1080 and it's got a reference blower, you just undervolt it and then the fan noise goes away. <laughs> so that's a magical trick that you can do to um, essentially get those reference cards not being that loud and noisy in a build. The last thing to go over is the motherboards. All the three used motherboards that we tested, they work absolutely fine. And I guess uh, the Zeus motherboard that we got, <laughs> perhaps we should test that new board out too because uh, from what I'm seeing around the net nowadays and what I've heard in Australia as well, not just the Gamers Nexus expose, I've also heard in Australia as well, the Zeus warranty claims are an absolute shamble right now. So I'm guessing you're buying a Zeus products brand new. You might want to just buy them and think of them as is <laughs> because man, some of those warranty uh, claims and the stories going on right now are absolutely ridiculous. Though in saying that, if you guys want a dedicated video talking about the Zeus warranty claims, I can talk to a lot more people in the industry and get the overall consensus from a lot of different retailers to find out how bad a Zeus's warranties really are. Because I've already heard stories from Australia and we did talk about that in a previous video and they were pretty bad. So um, may just be to the point where Maybe perhaps we should be, as a community, boycotting these products. Though the final thing now to talk about is the used PC parts scene, the economy, thrown in a bit of tech, yes, economics, and all that good stuff. So what we're seeing right now is how we've seen the trend play out in the previous few months. I mean, of course, I'm in Japan. Things could be a bit different to Australia in that they are. The yen is ridiculously cheap right now, but that being said, I'm seeing that there was just a lot of good deals this month. Deals that I have never seen here before, just ridiculously low prices coming into effect. And it's not just on one part, it's on many parts, meaning it's an overall trend. That is, used PC parts prices are getting cheaper. And also looking at the new PC parts, they're getting cheaper as well. I mean, we're looking at 7800X3Ds, they come down in price over the last few months. We're looking at other uh, CPUs, that aren't as targeted, 
they're coming down even more in price. Like I'm seeing i5 12400Fs going for the cheapest they've ever been. And so these prices are funneling down where essentially the new parts are forced to compete because a lot of those big companies, AMD, Intel, and even Nvidia, they've got massive loans on their books. They need to service those loans. In other words, they need to keep pumping out products. And if the margins have to go lower, then they will go lower. Now the used parts as well, we're seeing this same cycle come into effect. The new parts are getting cheap. They're hammering down the prices of the used parts, but also the economic conditions right now, governments aren't handing out stimmy checks and interest rates have gone up and the economies all over the world are starting to go into recessions. And so ultimately recapping on what we've talked about in a recent Tech Yes or No is video, I'll put the link up here if you guys wanna listen to it a bit more in depth. And so what we're seeing right now is the M2 money supply is staying stagnant and as that stays stagnant with all the interest that's accruing and all the debt that's out there, this is actually negative towards the actual overall trend of an economy. In other words, the economy has this insatiable demand for cheap printed money, which isn't coming into effect, at least on the consumer side. On the government side of things, it still seems to be doing quite okay. But as we all know, the government doesn't do the best job of making products and services. And so that per se is piling onto the inflation problem, though the luxury goods, your PC parts, they are coming down in price. And as we've said in previous videos recently, I do see them coming down in price even more in the next few months as money gets tighter until what I believe is the inevitable. And that is we have this sort of shock that comes through the system and then the printers spool back up in full force again. And when that comes into effect, then you may just see the opposite to what's happening now. Prices could go up very quickly on a lot of different things. Anyhow, guys, I try not to dwell on these things too much because I've realized one thing, and that is we're living in the now, and so we have to make the best decisions available to us at this point in time. And in terms of today's parts hunt, I believe we got some of the best deals out there on the used market. Do let us know in the comment section below what was your favorite deal in the parts hunt. I would have to personally say that GTX 1080 that we got for that bargain price from Junk Paradise. That is one crazy deal, but also that B350 motherboard too. I mean, it's underrated because it's just so cheap. But ultimately summing things up, it's never been a better time to be a buyer of used parts, but at the same time on the flip side, it's never been a worse time to be a seller of used PCs. I have been seeing some very slow <laughs> sales in Australia. In fact, I just sold the last PC that I had on hand and I've been over here for a few days. So actually my brother sold it for me on my behalf, but I expected to sell all my PCs before I left Australia and that just didn't happen. It was a very slow market. Even though the margins were decent, they weren't as well as they were at Christmas time, for instance. So it's tight margins and it's slow turnover for me personally. That's just the way it is. And sort of what, what I'm doing right now is honestly kind of stockpiling for the next Christmas season to come along. It seems to be the go to strategy right now but for some of you guys who message me behind the scenes don't be disheartened by that just know that you have to take the bad times as much as you take the good times so all that out of the way i'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon and if you stayed this far and you're not yet subscribed to tech yesterday then you know what to do hit that sub button ring that bell to get the videos as soon as they drop and i'll catch you in another tech video very soon also do let us know down below what you think of this banger aliexpress microphone <laughs> Uh, this is its first trial run here today out on the field and also in the studio here. But I, if it does work out pretty well, then I do want to use it at Computex just because I need a, a dynamic microphone that blocks out the outside um, noises because using the one that you usually clip on your shirt, there's just going to be too much noise when I'm at Computex in Taiwan next month. Anyhow, see you guys next time. Peace out for now. Bye.